Our ancient lesson today might sound familiar because we read it last week too. Today though, we're going to take a closer look at a very few verses from John chapter 20. I begin with verse 19. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As God has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them. He breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. You might remember a story from the New Testament book of Acts about the coming of the Spirit. In Acts' version of it, Jesus is nowhere around when the Holy Spirit comes. There's a big crowd gathered. The Holy Spirit comes in the rush of a mighty wind. The crowd begins to speak in all the different languages. It's a dramatic story with chaos and confusion. It's quite common for the Bible to have at least two versions of every story. That's one characteristic that supports a non-literal understanding of the collection of stories that we know as the Bible. The various texts of the Bible were expressed by different communities or by individuals over thousands of years, all of whom sought to describe the indescribable. For example, the presence of a sustaining energy that some might call God or sacred spirit or Holy Spirit, that's an experience beyond language. In Acts, the Holy Spirit comes with wind and fire and cacophony of different voices. And here in John's Gospel, Jesus, the post-Easter Jesus, mysteriously appears, even though the room is locked. He, he appears to his disciples, and he simply breathes the Spirit onto them. It's this quiet, intimate scene, a beautiful image Jesus offers with his very breath, the peace that is unlike what they have found. Jesus' very presence is felt in his breath. And through his breath, the disciples find peace. The centrality of sacred breath is found in a number of religious traditions. Hebrew scripture speaks of God forming humanity from the dust of the ground and breathing into the nostrils the breath of life. Meditation, awareness of breath, is a foundational spiritual practice in numerous religions, including Christianity. It is, of course, a very strong practice in the Buddhist tradition. Over the next few weeks, our focus will be on spiritual resiliency. What practices and awareness might help us to sustain a sort of calm centeredness, even through difficulty. In times of crisis, whether it be a pandemic or anything else that throws our life into chaos or has the potential to do that, we draw strength from whatever our preparation, our practice has been. It's the work we do before that allows us to handle the moment at hand. And there is perhaps no practice more foundational, more important, more helpful than awareness of breath. Our inspiration today is this beautiful story about Jesus' breath as the means for conveying peace. 
So we're going to close our worship today with just taking a moment to breathe. As you listen to the video, try to shift your body into a comfortable position. Find stillness just to listen deeply and enjoy your breathing. Just to settle into that peace, the peace that is said to surpass understanding, the peace that is as near as the breath that sustains our lives. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. Until next Sunday, friends, my prayer is that each of us take time to breathe, to give thanks for the resources available to us, for wisdom in the world, for love, nourishment, beauty that is around us in every moment. May we realize the power we have within ourselves to live from a place of centeredness. In the name of our God, who is our creator and our redeemer and our sustainer, go blessed.